What is up everyone? I am NC here making a bonus little video which is really, really cool. Uh, I wasn't expecting to make this video so let's dive right in and chat about the elephant in the room and that is a Samsung LE40 R88BD 40 inch TV. It's a bit of a long model number so I probably won't see it again for the rest of my life but there it is. Um, there is a story behind this, it's not a very interesting story but it's very cool nevertheless. So. What happens when you start a new life or you move into a new place or you um, have a new family member, a little baby and you're trying to get started and you haven't got much money and stuff is your family and friends, um, sometimes close family, close friends or even distant family and distant friends. Everyone seems to step up and help you in your time of need. So whether that's money, presents, cards or just sort of um, moral support and verbal support and stuff like that I, I've found that so many people around me have helped me and it's been a massive experience and there's still plenty more to come when we move into our new place. People saying that they've got things lined up to help us with, uh, with the new place and stuff which is great. So, a friend of mine and someone that I've been working with quite closely for the last three years or so decided to give me his spare TV. So I'd like to say a massive, massive thank you to him. Um, this is a Samsung TV 40 inch from probably around five to seven years ago. But the bottom of the line is the only TV that I own, I wasn't planning on putting this in shot so it's a bit in the background, but whatever. The only TV I own is this guy over there. That is a 17 inch 80s CRT TV. Now Jess owns a TV, um, but it's a 30 inch, sort of one of those quite low brand TVs. Um, and it's a pretty nice TV actually, but maybe not living room size by today's standards. So if I just sort of come into frame and stand next to this TV, I know you can't see my head, but this television is absolutely colossally massive and to have it given to me um, just massive massive thank you to not only TV guy because I'm not going to say his name in this video but pretty much anyone and everyone that's helped me including you viewers out there because you've all been very kind but all of this emotional soppy stuff aside and chatting about my new house and my new life that I haven't quite slotted into yet because I'm still in the old place as you guys can see but anyway this video is all about the TV. We don't tend to look at TVs on the channel but I thought I could fire it up on video and show you guys right now what is going to be the centerpiece of my living room for quite some time. I'm so glad to be um, the owner of this TV because I reckon it's going to be um, pretty much plenty for what I do. I was going to use Jess's 30 inch one, we were happy to use that and maybe use the projector because as you guys know up there I've got a 72 inch projector wall. Um, but yeah, now that we have a proper nice size TV it actually make things, it makes things a lot easier and better. So rambling aside guys, I don't have the remote or power lead for this thing but I was very um, pleased to see that it just uses a standard kettle lead. Um, but remotes are a little pricey online. You can get third party replacements for around five to ten pounds but the proper Samsung counterparts on eBay seem to be hovering around 20 to 30 pounds. Bit of a shame, but I'm gonna buy a proper Samsung remote for it because getting a TV um, of this size and pretty, still pretty new, especially by my standards, um, for free is absolutely awesome. So massive thanks. Let's check out this TV. Let's plug it in live on camera. This is a rough video. As you guys know, I've been doing all sorts of improvements um, ready for the relaunch of the channel, what with audio and stuff, but I'm just using my, my camera mic and stuff because we're just going to fire this up and see what it does. We'll also plug the Wii U into it and do a little tiny bit of gaming. You guys won't be able to see exactly what's happening, but hopefully you'll get some kind of idea. Now, in terms of resolution, I believe this is a HD Ready TV, so that's 720p native as far as I know. Um, but there it is plugged in. And uh, the question is now, where are the buttons? Now I see a little power light over there. Let's press the on button and see what it does. Now I've got no source connected at this moment in time. We'll just see if it powers up. Uh, the power light looks promising. And there it is. It's been left on channel 4, S4C. That is a Welsh only channel. Let's sort of scan up the channels a little bit just to see. Okay, so there we have volume. That's cool, that is cool. Um, and here are the channels. These are touch controls on the TV, seem to be working great. So BBC One, BBC Two, ITV, and all of these channels are of course Freeview channels. This TV has built-in Freeview. 
um, every TV does now. So there's not a lot I can show you without any kind of input. So guys, I just realized that I didn't show you the connectors on TV and us nerds love to see the connections. Um, so a bit of rough camera work then, a bit of handheld stuff. Um, the connections on this TV are pretty much everything you could want and more. They're mostly on the back, but some on the side. So let me start over here um, at the top. We have audio out, um, RCA audio out, which is always very welcome in my opinion. Not used by me in any of my setups at all um, at this moment in time, but something that I used to really enjoy on TVs um, for going out to a little 2.1 speaker system. It can make the world of difference, um, but now I'm all digital, so we'll talk about that in a second. Here we have RCA audio in for what's labeled as DVI2, which is technically H HDMI2 with a DVI adapter. So that means if you're using a DVI source and you've adapted it to HDMI, of course, you may not have audio with that. So you can plug in your audio right there and it will sync up on the HDMI 2 channel on the TV, which is all good. Talking of HDMI, you have two, connection, two connections there, which is fine. Um, you know, you'd see probably a little more on newer TVs, but there they are nevertheless. Here we have two SCART connectors, which are always very welcome, in the UK anyway. Um, actually, one of my most popular videos of all time on the channel was a video about how to convert VHS tapes to a digital format. And I talked a lot about SCART and we use SCART, and um, it became known to me that n pretty much no other countries use it as much as the UK ever did. I think the UK and France, so a lot of people didn't know what it was. Um, but it's worth a read on Wikipedia because for an analog interface, it can do so much. Um, lots of people say, oh man, what's the point in SCART when you've got composite? But SCART is capable of a lot, so it's definitely worth a read up on Wikipedia. There's some really interesting stuff about SCART. Um, moving on down here, we have your component input. So you've got your component video here and your uh, component audio here, which is just, again, another set of RCA jacks in. Here we have the digital audio out or the optical audio out. Um, this is great for connecting to home theater um, in a box system. So if you're not using a receiver like I'm not, you can connect all your sources to, to the television and then connect your surround sound amplifier here. Um, which is kind of pretty much the most flexible setup that you can have without having an AV receiver. Here we have uh, audio out in 3.5mm and a service port. The antenna connection, um, which I was going to plug in a minute ago, but to be honest, I don't think I will now. I'll just, I'll just show you a console source. I think that'll be better. And a VGA connection labelled as a PC input, which is always uh, very welcome. Coming around the side, we actually have a generous selection of ports on the side. We have a headphone jack at the bottom. Coming up, we have your composite inputs, um, which is just composite video along with your audio. If you don't want to use composite video, you can use S-Video, which is a very, very welcome uh, addition to this TV, which is great. Something that I've never had on, on a TV before and definitely um, good for older consoles. Uh, S-Video can look a lot better from something like a Super Nintendo than composite video does. Coming up, we have the third HDMI connector, as well as the common interface card slot. Now, that is it for the ports, and you've pretty much got everything there that you'd ever want. I cannot think of anything that is not there, um, apart from USB. I know that Jess's cheaper telly is a bit newer than this, and it does have USB in its own um, interface that allows you to browse media on a USB device, something like a hard drive or a pen drive or whatever, and it actually works really well, and it's something that we've used quite a bit in the past, but when we have our proper setup in the new house, we won't need that because I'll have streaming from the servers and everything set up properly um, through probably a PC connected to the TV or however I work it. I'm not even sure how I'm going to do it yet, but um, there won't be any need for USB on the television. Um, so, here is the standard IEC uh, power connection that I was talking about. Makes everyone's life a lot easier. No, pro no proprietary power connectors. And here is the Samsung cable tie. Cable steady, whatever it is. Um, which really, really does come in handy for making all your cables neat that are connecting to the back of the TV. Okay, everybody. I have plugged in my Wii U in the side HDMI because without dismantling my setup, that's pretty much the only place I could plug it in. Um, I'm now sitting in front of this TV in my bedroom and it just feels absolutely colossal. I am used to having a 72 inch screen and of course this is 32 inches smaller but it's a lot different when it's a projector. You expect projector screens to be big. When they're televisions they just appear bigger which is um, 
really, really cool. So I'm going to power up the TV again. And like I said, I've connected my Wii U. Um, so it's going to be a little bit of a process now trying to figure out how to switch inputs without the remote. But it may do it for us. I'm not too sure. It probably won't actually. There we go. Automatically configured TV display connection HDMI 720p 16 by 9. Is the picture on the TV screen displaying correctly? Yes. Okay, so interesting. Settings saved. Select. Okay. So I don't know what I was outputting for my projector. Must have been slightly different. Let's head over to Tom. So picture on the TV is actually looking really cool at the moment, guys. Um, what I'm going to do is, I've got Splatoon in the system at the moment. I'm actually going to take Splatoon out and we are going to insert Mario Kart. Now one thing I've noticed is there's a bit of a zoom happening on the TV. Don't quite know why that is. Maybe only very slightly noticeable, it's only cutting off a little bit. But I don't think I'll be able to sort that without the remote. But not 100% sure. We could give it a go. Now I'm going to turn my gamepad sound down uh, just so we can get an idea of what the TV sound is like. Of course I'll always be using external speakers anyway. Um, but we won't worry about the zooming thing at the moment too much. We'll just boot up the game and see what it looks like on this TV. So far, so good. Looks really, really nice from what I've seen. Maybe not quite as bright as what we're used to these days with LED panels. Um, LED backlit panels. Luigi card A! So yeah, sounding pretty bad actually. But that's with pretty much all flat screens in my opinion. Okay, so let's do a 200cc. Let's choose to be Yoshi, yellow Yoshi. Again, nice picture so far. I'm really pleased actually. TV works great. Looks pretty even across the panel. Maybe it's a bit brighter this side, but the um, the CFLs might take a little while to, to heat up. Looks very clear for 720p. Whoa! A little bit rough around the edges on Mario Kart at the moment, guys. Alright guys, so I'm just going to quit to um, a different sort of looking course, just to show the variety of the TV. 200... Something that looks quite a bit different. Something nice and bright and vibrant. The airport is always good. And then I may load a different game, something less cartoony, just to show some diversity. Lovely colours on this TV, guys. Lovely colours. This would have been an expensive model in its day. Whoa! As I say, guys, a little bit off practice on Mario Kart. You'll have to excuse me. Oh gosh! I guess I probably won't become Mario Kart Pro again until Little Man is in school. We'll have to see how it goes. Okay guys, so that's a good little example of some brightly coloured graphics. Um, I'm actually very pleased. As you can see, we are zoomed in a little bit too much. If you take a look here, you can see the four um, things around the, the blobs, but we are a bit zoomed in. So I'm just going to see if I can sort that without the remote. Alright guys, so one thing I've done now is I've quickly plugged a phono cable into the back. My optical cable wouldn't reach, but it won't make much of a difference. I'm just going into the... Uh, auxiliary one input on my surround sound now just because I was just getting temporarily sick of uh, television audio 
So, I'm loading up Resident Evil, which is probably the second darkest game I've got for the Wii U. Um, Resident Evil Revelations. I own Zombie U as well, but I'm less familiar with that game. I still need to play through it. I've managed to beat this game um, really quickly, actually. I got really into it. Um, I think I only did it on easy, but it was uh, still pretty cool. Alright guys, so here we are, taking a quick look at Resident Evil, and it looks absolutely great. So one thing about this TV, it's only 720p, but the general quality is really good. I'd rather a good quality panel 720p TV than a crappy panel 1080 TV. For anyone that hasn't played Revelations, by the way, guys, don't be put off by the fact that it's a modern Resident Evil game. It's a really, really good game, in my opinion. It's got a nice, eerie atmosphere about it. There's blood coming from the ducks. All right, guys, so in conclusion then, I know we've only looked at one source, and only time will tell, but so far, I am absolutely loving this TV. It looks great. I'm not sure how much is coming through on camera. Let me actually have a little look to see how much is coming through. You can kind of tell how good it looks. Um, to me, it does look pretty damn good, and I'm very, very grateful about receiving this for free very very grateful so that is the conclusion of this video guys um again resident evil good game this tv excellent stuff expect to see it in future videos this will probably be my main tv huge thank you for watching everyone please remember to give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video if you didn't feel free to give me a thumbs down and please tell me why you did not enjoy in the comment section if you're new here to imnc please consider subscribing I make all sorts of videos about all sorts of things that are fun, geeky, techy, all sorts of different things. So, thanks a lot for watching once more, and I will see you in the next one. It took a full 11 years to finish constructing the world's first Aquapolis, the floating city of Terra Grigia. A sustainable metropolis operating on a massive solar energy matrix and equipped with the latest green technologies. Never before had solar energy been used to supply power to an entire city. But in 2004, Veltro...